everlasting Father. Hallelujah. You are the rock of all ages, Jesus. Oh. Victorious, forever we will. 
Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Our Lord. How excellent. How excellent. It is your matchless name. Your name is strength. Your name is power. A strong tower makes me strong. Oh Lord, oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your matchless name. Your name is strength. Your name is power. Your my strong tower keeps me safe. Everybody sing a There's nobody like you. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Lord. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Lord. One more time, sing. Oh, 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 nobody like you. There's nobody like my God. One more time, sing. Search high and low, but there's nobody, nobody like there's you, nobody like my God. Like you, you're amazing, you're amazing, God. And none can confess. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. And when I can see. Of your hands, there's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. You're amazing, God. You're amazing, God. And none can There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. And when I consider Great 
and mighty, great and mighty is our God. Nobody like you. There's nobody like you. You're amazing, God, and none can compare. like you Lord when I consider your heavens and the works of your mighty hands nobody like you Lord there's nobody like you Lord you're amazing you're amazing God and God nobody can Nobody like you, nobody like you, Lord. When I consider your heavens and the works of your hands, nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, you're amazing, God.
And to everyone, you can have your seats. You can have your seats. I just want to bring greetings. And in the name of the most powerful and matchless name that there is, can we call his name tonight? Jesus. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. So I am so thankful for the honor to be here tonight and to minister. And I, I really want you all to join in as we worship. Because how many of you all, I just want to know how many of you all know who you are in Christ? What does the word say about us? The word says, God says that we are joint heirs with Christ, that we are above and not beneath, that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, you look like Christ. You're looking good tonight. <laughs> That's right, because we are children of the most high God. We are blessed 
We are more than conquerors. I want you all to sing with me this evening as we sing, I Know Who I Am. Special thanks to Melanie Joy for the invite. I appreciate it. So let's sing along, yes. And feel free to stand up. Feel free to rejoice as we sing. If you wish to. Show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. Hey, we are a chosen generation. All for to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. Declare it. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. Oh. Let's clap our hands onto the Lord. Yeah. Father, we worship you, Almighty God. We thank you for who you are. Oh, say we are. We are a chosen generation Called for to show His excellence All I require for life God has given me And I know who I am Say we are We are a chosen generation Called for to show His excellence Yeah all I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. I know who God says I am, what he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know who I am, I know who God says I am, what he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know we're walking, I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor Cause I know who I am I'm walking in power I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor Cause I know I'm walking I'm walking in power I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor Cause I know who I am I'm walking in power I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor Cause I know who I am Let's say oh, 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 I know who I am Sing oh, 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 oh Say I know who I am Oh I'm walking, say, I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor. Cause I know, let me hear you say, oh, we say, oh.
Take a look at me, I'm a wonder It doesn't matter what you see now When you see his glory Cause I know who I am Take a look at me, I'm a wonder It doesn't matter what you see now When you see his glory Cause I know who I am Take a look at me, I'm a wonder It doesn't matter what you see now When you see his glory Cause I know who I am Take a look at me, I'm a wonder It doesn't matter what you see now When you see his glory Cause I know who I am Hallelujah Let's declare tonight I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ Let's say that tonight I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ I am joint heirs with Christ I am blessed I am above and not beneath Hallelujah It's so wonderful to know that God loves us so so much And that we are his children Not just today, every day And he will never leave nor forsake us Amen There's a song called Never Ever Fail Anybody ever had God fail them? I, I never experienced that. I never had God fail me. And when we look at the Bible, we just see instance after instance where God came through for Daniel, for David. He just came through. And so I want to sing a song called Never Ever Fail. And the thing with this song, I love to get the crowd support, right? So when I sing, I see some of y'all watching like, uh. when I say, Father, you never ever fail me yet. This section, I want you to sing, I yeah, I yeah. Right. And then, Father, you never ever fail me yet. Over here. I am. Oh, okay. You all know this. All right. Let's try it one more time. So, Father, you never ever fail me yet. Over here. Sweet. Father, you never ever fail me yet. I am. I am. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Let's go. Feel free to get up and rejoice, sir, because we serve a God that never ever fails. He is a good, good, good God. Hallelujah. Never fail me. Never fail me. Hear the words of the song. It says, I have a father who knows all things about me. He knows all the thoughts that I have. He numbered the hairs on my head. My Abba Father, you call me to your purpose. Although at times I may feel worthless, forgiveness for my sin you purchased. All the trials that I've been through. All my guilt and all of my shame. Hey, there were things that I thought I needed. Yeah, yeah, but I know this is where I need your help. Father, you never ever fail me yet. Say, Father, you never ever fail me yet. Say, You always guide and protect me. Others forsake me, you keep me near. Father, you never ever fail me. You never ever fail me. I am made fearfully. And you are made wonderfully The plans you have for me My mind is not even conceived Wherever I go, Lord I will be running after you I will be seeking after truth It must be that I worship you When the enemy comes like a flood My God When I fail and feel I can live All the verses in my life no rhyme, yeah, yeah, but I know, I know God is in control. Father, you never ever fail me. Yes, I'm here, yeah. Hey, Father, you never ever fail me. Yes. I am. Yeah. You always guide and protect me. Yeah. Others forsake me, you keep me there. Father, you never ever fail me. You never ever fail me. The word of God says. You are the same yesterday, today and forever. You are the same yesterday, today and forever. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. Is that what the word of God says? He will never change. 
God of the impossible. I just want to remind you as I go that God, there's nothing too difficult for him. No situation that you're going through that he cannot fix. Once you just trust in him, once you ask that his will be done, he is there for you. He will never leave nor forsake you as the, as the song says. He will never leave nor forsake you as the Bible says. Right? So just continue to trust in God and know that he is there for you. Amen. Thank you, thank you. We're very happy to be with you again another time, and I congratulate Reverend Dr. Elmo Anthony, Sister Anthony, and the Rama family on your convention and your week of empower, empowering services and ministry. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Can you just take one minute with me and just lift your hands and just, just give God a note of praise and thanks. Lord, we give you the glory. <coughs> We worship you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things, Lord. You deserve. You deserve. You deserve the glory. Jesus, we magnify you. Jesus, we exalt you. How great is our God. Hallelujah. Who is like our God? There is no one. There is none like you, Jesus. Come on, beautiful church. That's right. Go ahead and give him praise tonight. Go ahead and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Great is thy mercy. Great is thy grace. Jesus, we adore you. Jesus, we adore you. Jesus, we adore you. Jesus, we adore you. Hallelujah. Oh, how we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love 
you, Lord. Sing it, I love you, Lord. I love you. Sing it, I love you, Lord. Sing it, I love you, Lord. Sing it, I love you, Lord. Love Lord, we thank you for this great church. We thank you for, oh Lord, uh, Pastor and Sister Anthony, for the elders, the members. Thank you, Lord God, for their, their desire to strengthen the church of Jesus Christ. Lord, we are so happy to be here. I pray that your Holy Spirit, Father, will just saturate this place as you have already manifested. I thank you for the, our music minister. May your grace and anointing and blessing continue to be on her, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the reminder that you have never failed us. And we know that you will never fail. Lord, give me your grace and your anointing to share with simplicity your word this evening that will cause us to be built up, Lord God, that will cause us to be ready for the gathering, the perfecting of the saints together, Lord. I give you thanks. I rebuke every demonic hindrance. Father, I even pray possibly for those who have joined via the digital media platforms or whatever social media platform they are on. Holy Spirit, touch their lives as well. Minister, Lord God, and let this church continue its growth and expansion in Jesus' name. And the church say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Again, Pastor Anthony, it is an honor and a joy for us to be with you all here at Rema Fellowship. Thank you very much, Mom. Welcome, sir. I do appreciate your kindness and hospitality. And um, it is, as I said, it's an honor. I thank you for inviting us to be a part of your celebration this week. And um, I remember Pastor Anthony, when you used to have convention, when you were across the street on the main road, I remember coming up there with Pastor a couple of times for uh, empowerment sessions in the mornings and so on. And there would always be... A, a, a very wonderful time of ministry, amen. Let's welcome Apostle Wayne Hayward as he comes in this evening. Amen. Yes, amen. Dr. Wayne is my friend. We had the pleasure of being at his church a, a, about a month ago when they celebrated their, their, you know, their time of convention. I think it was the 37th anniversary, was it? 27. I can't remember, but we were celebrating, and it was good. It was good. Kind regards to, to, to Lady Susan Hayward as well. Um, let me see all those who are members of Rema Fellowship here. Would you please stand? The Rema Fellowship people, would you please stand? He's Rema Gill. He's a twin. Is all right. <laughs> all the Rema people, please stand. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Thank you. The rest of you, all right, good. So we have some people visiting from other churches as well. Fair enough? Amen. And we have a few of us from Pune as well. Thank you for coming up and so on. I, um, I wanted, um, the truth is, guys, I, I haven't been feeling well. Eh? And we came back and it was really hectic, the funeral yesterday for the late Dr. Homer, you know, and um, the former head of Open Bible was a long and I got up this morning not feeling well again. I did maybe about an hour or so, and then I took some medication, went to bed, and got up half past four. <laughs> and Brother Anthony, I really was tempted to call and ask to be relieved of the responsibility. You know, but um, God will help us. Amen. Amen? Now, you have a theme, and I remember getting the email some time ago early on talking about the gathering, the gathering. And in the letter, it says that, it said that in, the, in these days, you know, the focus of the church and the desire of the, the church here at Rhema is to empower the church and to teach the church about being ready for the return of Jesus Christ. So that is really the emphasis 
and the focal point of your convention this coming weekend. From the best of my knowledge, I think, Donna, it's Friday morning. I'm here again, right? So on Friday morning, it is my heart's desire, as the Lord will permit, to focus on you know, an aspect of the gathering that, you know, maybe we may not think of it in an eschatological um, term. So, for instance, um, in eschatology, we think of end-time events, and we want to think about different, whatever, pre, mid, post-tribulation. I don't have time for other friends, which I just want to be ready when Jesus comes. <laughs> Full stop. So, whichever one you take, you, you, you big up. Tell somebody big up. You know, I like Shirley Caesar. I want to be ready. <laughs> Uh, I just want to be ready. Fair enough. Hey, Pastor Niles is you, boy. Oh, God. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor, you tell me, Niles. <laughs> God bless you, Pastor Niles. Yes, he is Powie Grenada. You all know that, right? Are you here for holidays? Yeah. Oh, the, you came for the convention? Oh, very nice. Is this Sister Niles? No, all right. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just make it. No, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pastor Anthony, I don't know, you know, so I just ask him. <laughs> and <laughs> Niles are asking in public, boys. So we <laughs> no, no, Pastor Niles, I met Pastor Niles some years ago. We were in Brooklyn, New York together for the, um, uh, that was the, the, the death cancellation service for Calvary Tabernacle. And I was preaching there for that celebration where they burned this mortgage of a humongous church. And um, Pastor Niles was there. He stayed in the same house. And we had breakfast and so on. And we lime and we'll talk. And it was nice. Since then, we planned to go Grenada and I never reach. <laughs> Anyhow, so whatever, whatever your position and so on in your theology, so be it, right? But there's an aspect of the, the, the gathering and... Uh, the, the rapture, is it an end or is it a means to an end? And we, we must, I consider that point, and I want you to just, we, we, we're going on a short journey tonight and Friday morning, right? Hear me out. If, if perchance there is some ambiguity, we could think it through again. Because we preach in the Pentecostal environment and circle, and we are very, very you know, strong about the rapture and the readiness and so on. That is an absolute, that is undebatable. But is it that alone? Is there something more? Why, why the gathering? Why the gathering? I want us to go back from the very beginning in the book of Genesis. Let's go back to the book of Genesis and we'll take it and just very, um, we're going to move through... Just for a short while, we're looking at the book of Genesis, um, Genesis chapter 1, look at verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, <coughs> after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So ladies and gentlemen, the first thing I see there in, in man, our, our purpose and the reason why we are created, we are created for dominion. Now, I want to be careful that we do not go again off balance on dominion theology. But when you study this, you find that wrapped up in that whole concept of dominion is really the stewardship mandate of the word of God. Are you there with me? We are called to be stewards. Somebody say stewards. Uh, if it belongs to God, but he has entrusted it into our care. That is why the scripture said it is required in stewards that they be found faithful. Paul was teaching the church. And so, ladies and gentlemen, our Christianity is not uh, uh, exclusively uh, uh, about hype and emotionalism, etc. But that, that is a part of who we are. We are expressive beings. I'm Trinity the Bone. I can't just stand up one place and not shake a leg or two. Are you there with me? 
Are you there with me? But it's not just about being hyped up and emotional. There is some content to the word of God that strengthens us on the inner man, that reinforces our faith and enables us to be effective in the word and in the way that God has created us to live. And so when we examine the scripture, from the very beginning we see that there is a mandate given. We are not living in a vacuum. We are not operating in a willy-nilly format. We are called to have dominion. We are called to live with an understanding and awareness and capacity for the stewarding of God's resources. Hello. And so many Christians never understand this. And we go through our Christian life always being broken, busted, and disgusted. Fed up and frustrated. We can never live in the fullness of the joy of our salvation. Hello. Amen. Amen. So, we see here from the beginning, look at what we are created for. The dominion, managing God's resources, stewarding what God has given into our hands. Go to chapter 2. Look at this. And verse 20. And God and Adam gave names. Okay, verse 19. And out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field. And every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Look at that. God created Adam, and God created the animals. You think God can give names? Huh? But look at what God does to reinforce his agenda and to... Uh, not just tell you I'm making you a steward, but to give you the responsibility in stewardship. He now draws Adam into the second phase and the second reason why we are created, into partnership with God. Christians, we are drawn into partnership. God calls Adam into his assignment. Are you there with me? So he, he is now engaging Adam to begin to do something. So many, many times, you know, we know what we have to do. We, we sometimes get the resources or the permission to do it, but we never begin to do anything at all. Can you identify with anyone like that, church? Talk to me. Now. They're, they're in the job, but they're not performing. Hello? They, they, they hold the position, they hold the, uh, the, the, the authority by, by form of you know, job title and description, but they're not doing anything? No, no, no. God wants us to do. He wants us to partner. He wants us to engage. He wants us to name them. And whatsoever Adam called it, that was his. So the first thing we are created for is for stewardship. Secondly, everybody said me, stewardship, partnership, and third, let's go to chapter 3. And look at verse 8. And this is after they eat the fruit and so on, and they are naked and etc. Now they begin to see, they are, their eyes are open. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife did what? From the, of the God amongst the trees of the Lord. Garden and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Ladies and gentlemen, we see here to me, very simply, but I, I am using basic comprehension skills, eh? no big theological explanation and so on. The reality is from that simple, those couple verses here, we see God created us for fellowship. Hello, are you there with me? Somebody says, Stewardship, partnership. Fellowship. Say it again. Stewardship. Stewardship. Partnership. Partnership. Fellowship. 
Oh, isn't what, what, what can you imagine? Just pause and think of yourself. Uh, having come from, some of us have come from broken homes, uh, illiterate homes, uh, uh, fatherless homes, alcoholic homes, drug abuse homes, uh, uh, religious homes, uh, 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 s- some single parent homes, etc. And yet, uh, in all that, from even uh, before the beginning of time, uh, within the heart of God, uh, He was creating us with these three things uh, for us to be sure. What an honor, ladies and gentlemen, to be called by God Almighty into this great, this great ministry to be a steward of God. But not just a steward, he brings us a step further and he says, here's what, you are now a partner with me. Are you there with me, church? You're not just working for me, but you're working Ah, yes, you're getting it. Are you there? Do you understand how valuable you are? Come on, touch yourself and say, I'm valuable. Come on, speak to yourself, man. I'm valuable. I say, eat your heart, oh devil. You can't touch this. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm an heir of God. I'm special because the Lord God of heaven has called me. Are you there with me? So so you must just, just these things alone. You must adjust. We must adjust our disposition. Stop walking with your head hung down. Lift up your head. Push out your chest a little bit. Strut your stuff and give God praise because greater is he that is in you than he that oh God I'm special I'm valuable so as we consider the gathering and then we go through the whole process the enemy realized he didn't try to go after the stewardship he didn't try to go after the right to partnership but he went after the God called us to st- as chores, then as partners with him. But then he moved it up and said, come hang out home by me now, man. Let, let's, oh, come on, we're talking real talk here this evening. How, how many of you working with, let's say, have high-profile bosses? Some of you have politicians as bosses and things, right? And big billionaires, millionaires. And you feel special when they invite you home by them. T- talk to me. Anybody here like that? Only well, never get invited. <laughs> Pastor Anthony, that is not a good sign. <laughs> no. Anybody here like that? Or, or some, some high profile individual or anything like that? And you, get, you feel special, right? There was a time when a certain very, very high profile United Nations um, representative to the region would come to Trinidad. I wouldn't say the title, but it is the high, was the, just put it the real high up. And every time that individual came to Trinidad, I would be invited to meet with him. My wife would go sometimes. And other people, how come they calling you? You know what I mean? What are they inviting you for? And I'm talking about one-on-one, you know. Not with Sunny Man was a crook, eh? <laughs> They were just trying to butter me up to adjust to the agenda. But that, 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 that no, you don't understand an Indian from down south. You can't put butter alone. You have to put doubles. <laughs> <laughs> and the church said, you understand me? <laughs> All right, now, right, boy, Niles. So if I was in Grenada, you had to give me a piece of fish. <laughs> Come on, let's be real now, man. Right, uncle? We've been normal. Yeah, it didn't work. So, but, but here's what. The king of the universe, the lord of all apostles, has called us and said, come sit with me. Oh, God. There is nothing greater than that. In your presence. That's where I am strong. In your presence. That's where I belong. Oh, God. It's good to know that you are here beside me. Hey, it's good to know that you are here to catch my fall. It's good to know that you are here when I call. Let me hear you. It's good to know that you are here. Ladies and gentlemen, the king of glory. 
I don't think you understand it. The Lord Most High, the awesome wonder, he who was and is and is to come. He who is the first and the last. Can I get a witness, somebody? He who rides on the winds, who speaks and everything stops. Oh God, he's a friend of mine. Friendship with Jesus. Fellowship divine. Oh, what blessed sweet communion. Jesus is a friend of mine. Eat your heart out, devil. If we talk, want to talk about the gathering, we must understand what we're gathering for. Why are we here? And so, as we look at the gathering, why, Reverend Anthony, the gathering, in your letter, you said we want to ready the church for the return of Jesus. And why? The very thing that God wanted from the beginning, I, I, I present to you, is the same thing he wants now. His agenda has not changed. His heart for us has not changed. Uh, the same thing. Because when we go through all of scripture, and I'm, I'm not going to even attempt to do that tonight. This is a bright, educated, mature church. Uh, uh, he's still waiting for us after we go through all these things after we've gone through rapture after the dead in Christ has risen and there is a reunion according to the apostle Paul and we ever with the Lord there would be the distribution of uh, crowns uh, and rewards uh, this soul winner's crown the crown of life, the crown of rejoicing uh, and, and all the other crowns etc. What do we do? What is the ultimate reason for gathering? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, why are we going to be gathering? Uh, why is God getting his church ready? Why is he saying to get in order? Uh, why? Why? So that we can gather uh, around the throne uh, Holy, holy, holy. All the saints adored. It's not about Mansing. It's not about open Bible. It's not about Pawi and Church of God and Doxa. It's not about Church of God in Christ. About Apostle, Bishop, Pope, Evangelist. It's about Him. It's all about you, God. To worship you, I live. Hey, somebody give him praise at Rama. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> hey, worship, worship. That's why we're gathering, brothers, to worship the Lord. Mothers, that's why we're gathering, to tell him I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. That's why the musicians getting together are done to praise him. With the long sounding cymbal, praise him. With the harp and string instruments, praise him. Let everything... That's the reason for the gathering. Heaven is not made up of trinities only. It's only trinity that is gathered for nothing. Right? What are we gathering for? A gathering sister. Oh gosh. Bishop, just to worship him. Let's worship. Let's lay our lives down at his feet. <laughs> Let's worship. Let's tell him he is all that we need. Jesus, I love you. Can I get a witness? I lift my voice in praise. It's you I love. It's you I worship. Hallelujah. That's why, that's why you have to practice for this gathering. Hallelujah. We had a very pretty guitar, um, quick guitar in the Caribbean. 
Can anyone tell me who is one of the prettiest cricketers that ever batted in the Caribbean? No, man. <laughs> no, no, Richard. No, 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 even Lara said that this man was prettier than him. Carl Hooper. One of the prettiest batsmen in the Caribbean region was Carl Hooper. But one of the biggest disappointments in the history of cricket is also Carl Hooper. <laughs> Why? Because he was never ready for the gathering. At the gathering of the batsmen, you showed up for a purpose, and that is to make runs. At the gathering of the church, we show up to worship. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, and, and Carl Hooper did nothing meaningful then. I don't want to be like that. So the gathering is not the end. The gathering is a means to the end. So that the purpose for which we were created in the book of Genesis for fellowship with God. By then, the stewardship and all of that would have gone by because there, there, thereafter will be a new heaven and a new earth. You understand, Apostle? We are not fight up with no devil in hell and thing again. You are no parliament in that, you know. Oh, we will be ruling as kings and priests. Am I right, uh, Bishop Anthony? You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so if you had a fight up, fix this chair, Jam. Yes, yes. <laughs> You understand? If we had a fight up, then all we're doing is spending our time singing. Ah, we worship and bow down. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God, all my ancient of days. El Shaddai. Adonai. We worship you. Are you there with me, somebody? So therefore, I'll just wrap up with these three things for tonight. Everybody happy going home early? Let's be honest now, man, right? Right? So we, we, we know why we gather in. We know why we're gathering. And I, I wanted to put that in context. Because this is not just to make it on the bus ride. Some people show up, I don't know. Yeah, no, no. In a, oh, God help me. <laughs> Long time in train. Now we know we're going out in. All who know about that? Or what is the next word we used to use? Excursion. Right? I don't know if you all ever did that in Rima. And not be pleased to come down south to go by the um, Clifton Hill and Columbus and, and Vesany and so on. And we not. Sometimes we head to the east in my I'm south. Go to the east in my arrow. We come into Balandra. We used to be afraid to go Maracas. Long time when you hear Maracas and you're from south, you're frightened. You understand? There was an extra dose of dotage in south those days. They didn't know what Maracas looked like. So you're scared like that. <laughs> you feel like every car go up the hill going to fall down. <laughs> Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so you had to be prepared. And one day we, we're going to out in. And my deceased pastor, Pastor Andrew, they stop and pick up a lady. No preparation. Uh, Baptist lady along the road from the church. Now, neighbor, all of us, we grew up in the village. And I said, I mean, we all did our Christian hospitality and whatever. But there was no preparation. She wasn't ready for an outing. And some people, well, can we, where, where are we going if we're ready? Where are we, where, is the church really ready? Are we giving ourselves to this stewardship mandate? We don't, that is not for heaven, friends. That is for earth. Are we giving ourselves to the partnership mandate where we connect with God and His agenda flows through us? That is not for heaven, that is for earth. That is why the devil didn't go after that. He understood that would automatically be affected if he broke our fellowship with God. And so we become weakened and we are not prepared. We are never ready. Not ever ready. Never ready. Because our fellowship with God has been affected. Remember David? David messed up with Bathsheba. And he was, he was affected. And when he was confronted, he cried out to God. So if the church and us today in this 
day and time must be ready. We need a good godly confrontation again. We need men and women of God who will arise with boldness yet sensitivity. We need men and women who wouldn't play the political games even in the church. They're frightened to talk because how much offering they will get. Who would leave the church? Huh? Look at the prophet. The prophet went to him and presented the case. Talk to me tonight. You all know about it? We still need people like that, like the Apostle Paul, who will write letters occasion the scripture. Uh, and when you study the epistles, you find out why they were occasion or what warranted the writing of that letter. And Paul wrote to them, the Corinthian church, because of immorality, idolatry, false doctrine, division, legal issues among brethren. Even so much questioning of the reality of the resurrection from the dead, which would affect the gathering. And Paul writes to them to address the issues and bring the church back in order. And to enable there to be proper teaching to ready the church. So all the talk we talk about the gathering. There is a responsibility for leadership in the gathering. And that is to bring the truth of God's word. To the church of Jesus Christ in this age. To remind us, I'm not saying that it was never there. We have had tremendous moves of God throughout the ages, ladies and gentlemen. Don't feel too good, man, sing that all you have it all now. No, we ain't so good. We learn from our forefathers. We stand on the shoulders of great men and women who have uh, stood for the faith. And like Jude, they contended for the faith. We need for the church to be ready now. Ladies and gentlemen, we need leadership. Leadership. Who understands what we are created for? Stewardship, partnership, fellowship with God. Who understands that the ultimate of our Christian and our relationship experience with God will be to worship and cast our crowns down before the Lord. If we do not, and hear me carefully, if we do not live through and endure hardness, if we do not uh, uh, overcome temptation, if we do not live righteously, if we do not win souls, what kind of crowns if we do not endure uh, even the, the killing of our physical bodies? What will we have to give to God? Some of us want to skate into heaven by the skin of our teeth. Friends, Donnie McClurk in it, I remember. I think one of those guys quoted at the, the, the tribute service to Dr. Homer this week. And, and truly, Donnie said it right. You know, but you know what? He wasn't thinking about all the nice things. He just wanted to be there where God is. But you know what? I want to push it a step further. God, in his divine wisdom and the sovereignty of his plan, created an opportunity for an ultimate worship experience. For us to cast our crowns before him. The crown of life. The incorruptible crown. The crown of righteousness. The crown of glory. The crown of rejoicing. The soul winner's crown. Hey. What are we doing? What I'll do on Friday morning, God's willing. We'll just focus a little bit, Bishop, on the crowns. A necessary requirement for the gathering. Because I'm saying to us, in my presentation tonight, the reason why we gather, and the ultimate gathering, is so that we could worship the Lord. So if you have an issue, ain't got no preaching up there, apostle. It have no theological debates up there, Dr. Anthony. No woman with head covered or uncovered. Pants or no pants. Tongues or no tongues? Are you there with me? None of us up there with none of those things. Big church or small church? Presbyterian, Catholic, Anglican, Baptist, or Pentecostal? Hello? I feel some of us would be shocked in heaven. We might see some good Catholic people who encounter Christ. And we, we condemn those people. And some of our Pentecostals, hypocrites will be in hell. 
I ain't going there. I ain't going with nobody there. And I ain't sending you there because I can't do that. You're on your own. If you end up in hell, you chose that. Don't blame nobody. I believe some people so, so, so dunce head. They will try to blame people in hell for sending them there. You choose to go there. Are you there with me, somebody? I choose to be guarded. Ah, uh, oh God, uh, if we go to go down Donald with this gathering, to gather, you have to allow yourself to be gathered, you know. <laughs> oh God, Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oh, I long to gather you uh, like a mother hen would gather a check. But there's uh, some people, you know, you want to gather them uh, under the covering of the church. Uh, you want to gather them, gather them uh, under pastoral care and covering. Uh, you want to gather them uh, because there's a mongoose out there, a uh, chicken hawk flying out there. Oh, one of the reasons we must understand the value of the gathering is because we are vulnerable in this world outside the grace and power of God. Hello, somebody. Jesus said you must allow yourself. I want to gather you, but you wouldn't. Paul talks about the gathering. In Acts 14, after he goes on his missionary journeys, uh, he comes back and he says to them, to the leaders, go and gather the people. So I could give an account. Gathering provides security. Gathering allows for accountability. Are you there with me, church? I'm showing you from the scripture. You know, it's all that you go and read it. I ain't going to read all that for now. Hebrews 10. Some people argue about certain aspects of the context and so on, but the, the, the baseline is let the church gather together so we could worship. Forsake not the assembling, the gathering of ourselves. I ain't saying nothing religious here, but other religious faiths, they have in service now. They're calling it service. And not us Christians who gather in for worship all the time, we have a problem with that. To come out. If you have a problem to gather here, where are you going even for? That's what it's about. If you can't gather here, some people say they have a problem with crowd. Where you feel up, up there, have one person? <laughs> Talk to me in a church. You have an issue with worship. That's because you have not died to self. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless. I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in. Oh God, the old songwriter was right past and I just remember him. Christ liveth in me. Yeah. Christ liveth in me. You remember that? Anybody? Well, help me sing itself now, man. You leave me on my own. <laughs> oh. <coughs> Christ liveth. It's not me, but Christ who is living in me. We cannot be gathered. Ladies and gentlemen, if we don't have Christ living in us. And the church said, ah, all the talk we talk, all the nice things we try to nice it up or fix up, uh, all the contemporary uh, additions and additives we have to the modern church, none of that means anything unless we're ready for the gathering. Are you there with me, somebody? Because this is not the end. This is a means to an end. Hallelujah. And uh, just, just a few things. Let me just give, it, give this to you quickly and I'm gone. Somebody say I need gone. I'm really gone. Here they tell me tell you quick. As you go through Matthew 24 and 25, Jesus talks a bit about the return. And he says, watch therefore, for in such an hour as he think not the Son of Man returns. In chapter 25, Bishop Anthony, he goes on to speak about the five foolish virgins and the five Wish, uh, wise versions, all in the context of the bridegroom who is coming. Modern song, behold, he comes riding on clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. So lift your voice, it's the year of jubilee. And out of Zion Hill, 
salvation. Well, back in the days, we didn't know that when we used to sing, he's coming soon. He's coming soon. With joy, we welcome his returning. It may be morn, it may be night or noon. Come on, I know he's coming. And we shall see the king. Anybody remember? We shall see. The, we shall see the king when he comes. He is coming with power. <laughs> we hail the blessed hour. We shall see the king when he... Oh, yes. Ah, like it or not, he's coming. <laughs> Believe it or not, he's coming. <laughs> Try to stop him or not, he's coming. <laughs> and so we must get ready for the gathering. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Jesus alludes to a few things. Write this down first. There is a requirement to be ready. He wants us to be ready. Jesus says you must watch. That means get ready. Be prepared. Watch. Be diligent. Be vigilant. Be alert. <sighs> you take it from Matthew 24. Go down to 25, 1 to 13. And then he said another thing is, if he says to watch and be vigilant and alert, then that means not only is he instructing us, but he wants us to be ready. Are you there with me, somebody? Thirdly, you understand? He is going to help us to be ready. He's going to resource us. Tell somebody he will give the resource. But just before we look at that, so there's a requirement to be ready. What does it mean to be ready? And very simply put is this. It means that one is in a state of completed, not completed, you're in a state of, not a state of preparation, eh? completed preparation. All of your preparations, a process, a work has been completed. Because you can't move while preparing, you have to finish. You understand what I'm saying? Are you there with me, somebody? <laughs> One is just, wait. in other words, you're just waiting for the moment. I remember back in the day, Pastor Anthony, don't you remember, there was a group, I think, from Lavantil Open Bible, Ecclesia. They used to sing a song. I think um, Patrick Lashley sang it as well. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, to go up into glory. Any moment now, we're going to be changed. You remember that? And Patrick Lashley, I think, really sang it the most. But we're going to be ready. We have to be changed. Paul says we will change from glory to glory. This mortal will put on immortal. And here's what, uh, here's what Paul picks this up in 1 Corinthians 15. And he says, here's what's going on. This gathering that we're talking about, eh? and, and, and this end of worship, it is eternal. Because he says in verse 19, if in this life alone... We have hope in Christ. We are of most men, all men most miserable. In other words, if there is not a divine end to all that we have here, what are we doing it for? It's better like we like Trini go and balance. Have a ball. No, I'm serious. Pastor Anthony, if when you're dead, you're done. Why submit yourselves and subject yourselves to the discipline of Christian living? Christianity is a discipline. It's full of joy. But those joys are derived by adherence to disciplines. And the unregenerate, unsaved man has a problem with that. Because he has to feed the flesh. So Paul talks about it. So what does it mean? It means you're in a state of completed preparation. So there's a requirement. Somebody say a requirement. Yes. Secondly, we have resources. God has resourced us, sister. You know, boss, I forget your name. All of a sudden, know the last name, Alexander. I forgot. Brother Alexander, here now, boss. Jesus give us the resource, you know. Church, we are not without the resource. It is wrong to give someone an assignment or a job and don't give them the resources for it. Huh? You have a human resource consultant, Donna. You can't win a case in the, the labor court if you didn't give them the tools 
and the resources and expected it. It's only in Pharaoh's Egypt that this happened. No straw, but bill bricks. Hello? God has given us resources. The first one. Somebody write his word. He has given us his word. The word builds us up. The word instructs us in truth. The word builds our faith. The word empowers us to resist and stand against sin. The word of God, you know, sharpens us. It's like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces, like a fire that purges. The word washes. Are you there with me, somebody? Secondly, he has given us God himself, Emmanuel, God with us, the Holy Spirit. So here's what, God has given us what it takes to be ready. Holy Spirit is there. You understand what I'm saying? You, but you shall receive power or the capacity to do. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you shall be able to do all that is necessary. The mandate that is given cannot be achieved without the person and power of the Holy Ghost. Hello, church, somebody. So all of the nice things we have, and boy, we have a lot of nice things that are new. Elder, we can't do it without the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is our sin, our alert. So when you see sin and temptation comes and some kind of thing coming against you and you're being tempted, the Holy Ghost rings a bell in your heart. Watch out for that. And if you hear no bell, something wrong, you know. Not a Baptist bell, palang, 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 you know. No wait for your grandmother to pull out no bell there for you, you know. You're the Holy Ghost. He's the sin alert for the believer. That's why I put it, you know. Don't take no offense. He, 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 a buzzer goes off in my heart. Something coming up, you know. Something come, be careful, you know. Why? Because we walk in close together. He is helping me. He is using the word in me to help me to get ready for the gathering. Because as I go through the gathering, I will come to God's divine purpose of fellowship for eternity. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And I'll be able to cast my crowns. I'm sure at least one I'll win. If I have one self, boy, Niles, up, a happier than a nun. The third thing God has given us to prepare us is his body. Ephesians 4 talks about that. Through his body. He is the head of the body. And by whom the body fitly joined together. Uh -huh, grows unto edification but by that which every joint supplies. You find that going on from verse 14 there in Ephesians chapter 4. So the body of Christ is enabling growth. Are you there with me? God is enabling growth. He's preparing the church through the body. That is why when some people say, I don't need the church. Now you see me? Wait, you, cannot, you, you cannot be the church outside the church. Full stop. You're mad. Something, you, you have mental issues. You cannot exist as the church outside the church. All the challenges, problems, and difficulties we have right among us, we are still the church. Are you there with me, somebody? We need the church. Just touch about three people and tell them we need to be in the church. Come on, tell them, tell them, we, you need to be in the church. So the gathering. Tell somebody he requires it. He resourced us for it. But finally, we must resolve within ourselves to be ready. And I close there. It is a choice. Nobody can make it for you. You and I have the same tools. You and I have the same purpose. We were created for stewardship, created for partnership, created for fellowship. We have the same word. We have the same Holy Ghost. Are you there with me? We have the same church. We have to make a choice. Hallelujah. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. She had a resolve. I'm going to see the king. Daniel said, oh my, I ain't worried. I ain't stressing up myself. I don't hear tak tak. I'm thinking it's trauma wrong, you know. I'm looking to duck. <laughs> Niles says, you making all that noise, boy? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, God. Help me, somebody. <laughs> You understand? <laughs> Think about the Hebrew boys. 
They say, oh, king, we ain't careful to answer you. We don't make up our mind on this matter, you know, king. You yeah, know, discussion on this, you know. Talk, the problem with some of us, like Eve, we want to have discussion and negotiate with the devil. Hello, relax, relax, guys, relax. Don't worry. If it breaks, you don't break already. Right? You go tell your wife that when you go home so easy now, you go see. <laughs> All right, let's continue. We come to our end. You have to choose it, eh? Joshua said, hey, now, if it seem evil to you all serve, serve the Lord, you make up your mind, you know. But you see, as for me and my house, I have resolved this issue already. I have reconciled this issue in accounting term. We have balanced the figures. We have come to a conclusion. The thing is in order. It is resolved. Ah, because I've been resourced based on the requirement. And I have resolved this issue. That I'm going to be ready. Here, yeah, friends. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be ready, sister. I'm going to be ready, young fella. My friend in the back with a nice tie, I'm going to be ready. I don't care who bad talk me, I'm going to be ready. <laughs> I don't care who leave the church, I'm staying right here and I'm getting ready. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are some hindrances, you know, sometimes deception comes up. I don't care who go on 98 or 107 and preach false doctrine because some of them just talk some real nonsense. Uh, I am bothering with them. I am going to stay. Well, you're frightened to say anything about that. Yes, I just listen in between. And sometimes I say, why they don't keep their church money and go and feed the poor? Paying for airtime and you have nothing accurate to say. Forget the positive. You could say encouraging words like a motivational speaker, but you have to be theologically accurate. Are you there with me, somebody? You understand? So, friends, the gathering. Everybody say it with me. The gathering. Perfectly joined together in the gathering. <sighs> And, and, and the, the sub-theme there, perfectly joined in Christ. You know, when you gather, you must gather in some place, some location. So in this case, the place is a person. And that is Christ. Are you there with me, somebody? Simply put it there. God has created us for stewardship, partnership, fellowship. In order to live out that, that was affected by sin in the Garden of Eden. He has birthed the church through the blood of his son. And he's giving us an opportunity and saying to us, I'm going to gather you one day. This earth will pass away. But I want you to be ready. I'm requiring that you be ready. I have resourced you to be ready. But you, may, you need to make a choice to be ready. Because there is an ultimate worship experience that I want all of you to be a part of. Off. Let's stand tonight as we close. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take a minute. Take a minute if you can. And just give God another thanks for loving you so much. Thank, come on, come on. Lift your voice. Lift your voice.